Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Andrew and uh, as you can see, I've got some new stuff I've been growing. All right, so let's get down into it. So the last video I posted was about electroculture and there were a lot of people who were interested. I apologize. The electroculture system was great and I will tell you it did work. It created a, a quick bounty of peppers and they're still here. Um, you know, we have sugar rush peach over here jalapenos, lazia peppers, um, and they're all doing really well. Uh, been very productive, been picking off of them, and uh, my nephew's even been thoroughly enjoying the Sugar Rush Peach. But uh, unfortunately, it became a tripping hazard, um, as there are a few people that do like to go through the yard. Uh, I had to remove it. Um, my wife actually cut her leg, so I'm going to redo the electroculture in this raised bed which I built recently um, using one inch PVC as well as silt fence and it's just attached and uh, it's been working really well much much cheaper than buying a raised bed of that size and um, I guess I've also been <laughs> I've done quite a few things since my last video but this guy is a little four inch PVC pipe system. I use SDR 35 drain pipe. Uh, it's really easy to work with. And I use rubber fittings on the ends, rubber hose to feed the water in. And this is all connected up and flowing into the box there and into a pump. I'm just using a 27 gallon container to do it. Um, on this side of the pipes, I have a manifold again one inch PVC and in the bottom is uh, some hot glue kind of a crap job <laughs> hot glue but I did it and it just going up and it goes up to about I don't know that level and what that does is it creates like a mini cracky environment for them where they always have access to water flowing through the pipes but it doesn't flood them and the water is being oxygenated just from the flow of things as this drains this goes out and the drain goes back down in and the splash of water down in creates the bubbles it oxygenates the water and cycles on through i'm doing a lot of different experiments because um i used to do pipe systems with my father many many years ago I don't know, probably 15 years ago now and uh, we had some six inch pipes but we cut it in half so the square you know with the the cubic footage inside or the square footage, whatever you want to call it, um, the cubic area is about the same as it would be for a four inch pipe. And the roots, though the roots did get pretty full in the pipes, it uh, still thrived and did very well. So I'm testing that again. Um, this, I can already tell you, these roots are very close together. And these are all a tomato that are called 10 fingers of Naples. I'm looking to try and get a system going as fast as I can to grow as many tomato plants as I can um, for preserving and things like that, freezing. Um, and I know this is pretty close together. Probably gonna have a lot of root um, conjunction issues. So I'm just kind of testing this out and these are kind of backup tomatoes right now that I'm gonna keep on the fly for my new system that I built just a couple days ago. Um, well, before I go over there, I guess I'll tell you what all of these are. Um, so this is red lettuce. I don't know the varieties of all of these because I just planted on the fly, but this is devil's ear lettuce, which I'm very uh, impressed by. It's a uh, Baker's Creek uh, seed, which is supposed to be slow to bolt, supposed to do well in warm climates. So I'm really happy so far, no bitterness. And some butter crunch lettuce, which is delicious and uh got uh, two jalapeno peppers i'm trying to test out as many different plants as i can in the system just to see what does well and what doesn't so far uh nothing has underperformed everything has been amazing and growing very quickly quicker than it does in the dirt and you know i'm using some of these as control just to see the speed against one another and it's just hydroponic wins every time um in the next row we have purple bok choy Tatsoi, which if you haven't tried Tatsoi, it's a mini bok choy, but it's very tender like spinach. It is so good. Like you can use it as a spinach replacement and it grows well in the heat. It does really well in Florida or anywhere where it's warm, but you can grow it virtually anywhere. 
as long as you keep it in the right condition. Um, another type of uh, bok choy, I think it's uh, it was like ice ice leaf choy or something like that from uh, Baker's Creek. Uh, we have a mini Cajun bell, which I actually had in the dirt and I loved it so much I wanted to put it over here because I knew it would do better. But man, it, it's like uh, it's like a little mini bell pepper, but it's got no heat to it, but it's got the bite of a hot pepper and it's just really good, like stuffing with cream cheese or something. We have arugula. Uh, I put this in actually a few hours ago. It's a tiny Tim tomato. We have another one of those ice choys. It's from Baker's Creek. We have a Japanese mustard, which is excellent. Very tender too. Um, good. I like a little bite on the BLTs. So instead of lettuce, sometimes I'll just grab one of these and just put it on and uh, it's really good. Trying another one called filter kraut. This is a very um, big cabbage, so I'm really curious how the cabbage is going to do. It's going to take up a lot of root space, so that'll be another test. And then I have ten, um, ten fingers of Naples growing over here, which is a paste tomato similar to the San Marzano variety, uh, indeterminate in my region. A lot of people grow it and call it determinate because of, of the short growing season but technically they do grow as an indeterminate and they certainly are showing the traits of being an indeterminate. So I was debating for a long time what they actually were is most certainly uh, indeterminate. Um, all right, so uh, on to the next. Um, I guess I'll go through the raised bed here, kind of show you guys. I started these very small. Um, these are just typical cabbages, but as you can see, all the cabbages are doing very well. When I built this raised bed, I did it like a lasagna. I did um, a bunch of logs and branches and loose, you know, and like compostable objects in the very bottom, filled it up pretty full. Um, any clippings I could get, any trimmings, and then that saved me a lot of cubic feet space with the dirt. Um, once I got done with that, I put down some uh, new soil and then I put down a layer of native soil um, and then I put down a layer of worms. Uh, I did red wigglers and then I did another layer of uh, good soil and that's what's on the top here along with some volcanic ash and um, some, I think another uh, very mild micro fertilizer, something with very small numbers. Um, so what I'm doing is garlic around the edges and that has definitely kept the pests away. I, I can't recommend that enough. Um, maybe even better than the electroculture. And I will say one thing I noticed is the electroculture did benefit the growth of the plants. However, it did not prevent pests. I still had spider mites and I've had to battle them and they're gone now, but uh, I used, I just kept using water hoses and I would blast the bottoms of the leaves and now thankfully the ladybugs are taking over and eating them on their own so i have to do nothing more to those plants i'm just letting nature do its thing so um i've got a, a mustard green here a uh, typical regular mustard not the japanese kind and uh like i said all all five cabbages there so some collard greens in the back and uh, bok choy here which actually had two bok choys see I harvested the bottom of this one. I ended up with five pounds of bok choy just from one plant. It was incredible. Uh, we actually used one bag already and I still have two more uh, in the freezer. And they're great for soups and stews or if you wanna uh, do stuffed cabbages, it works basically the same as any cabbage. You can do whatever you want to to it, it's delicious. Um, I have some strawberries here that I'm just, I'm trying to keep alive. Um, some strawberries are growing. There's a flower back there, actually, it's poking through. This was a uh, cutting, just a sucker of a tomato from my hydroponics and the totes over there. Um, I took whenever uh, there was gonna be a cold, uh, like a cold snap, but it ended up not being a cold snap at all. Um, we've had a knock on wood, a very decent winter this year. Um, the lowest we've gotten is 44, and they're calling for possibly a low of 41 here in the next few days, but that's still really good. Uh, as a result, a lot of fruit trees have been outperforming themselves this year. Um, but yeah, so onions, mostly uh, garlic in here, some onions, but uh, the garlic has taken over. Yeah, Brussels sprouts here, I didn't realize at the time they get much bigger. They're probably going to crowd each other, but we'll see what happens. Um, but that's a black crim, by the way, black crim tomato. These are a, a small potato leaf 
uh, dwarf indeterminate tomato. I forget, I got it from Tomato Fest. Can't remember the name for the life of me, but I just figured I'd grow them to see how they do. Very, very slow growers. Um, I'm not sure if that's how they are all the time. Uh, if, if you're watching this and you've grown the Tomato Fest Dwarf Tomato Project, um, let me know your experience with it. If you've seen very slow growth with yours, or maybe it's just these two particular seeds. Um, but all right, so we'll move on to this new project. This is a basically the same amount of pipe as that guy, but I didn't cut anything. I didn't cut any of the pipe and um, I was able to save a lot of time and money just by utilizing everything more standard or as is. Again, I used uh, tubes which connect to uh, the pump down there and then they go in the top. Uh, rubber caps, uh, the rubber caps are a must. I, if you're gonna build something like this, don't go for the regular PVC caps because if you ever have to do maintenance, you're gonna wanna be able to I don't know, use a chimney cleaner to push roots through or a, a pressure washer or whatever you know you fancy when it comes time to clean the roots out. Um, and then I use pool noodles, uh, round pool noodles that are suited for three inch, a little bit bigger than three inch and they have a hole in the middle. And what I did is I just cut a little section and cut a slit in it so you can open it up around. I'll just show you this guy. Put it around a Root Riot Grow Sponge, and in the Root Riot Grow Sponge, I have, uh, and this one is a lettuce leaf basil. I'm doing a lettuce leaf basil on both sides, and um, I'm doing so lettuce leaf basil there, there, and the rest of these are tomatoes. Um, majority paste tomatoes. Uh, I'm doing Jumbo Romas, San Marzano Ridorta, which the San Marzano Ridorta are supposed to be an improved version of the San Marzano. They're pretty much bigger, and I don't know if they're more resilient, but we're gonna find out. Uh, and then also uh, some mushroom basket. Uh, I'm doing a pineapple tomato. I'm doing a black strawberry tomato down there. And uh, as you can see, I still have a lot of pipe left. I'm gonna be putting a lot of that to use. I don't know if you saw the uh, five-way fitting here. But I'm going to be putting a piece of pipe in that, and then I'm going to be putting a piece of pipe in that and creating a walkway. And ultimately this could turn into like a makeshift greenhouse that has um, just, you know, three mil plastic over it in the winter and a shade cloth over it in the summer to allow me to grow more stuff for longer season. Um, this summer I'm going to be in the search of tomato varieties that do better in the super high humidity. I'm looking into Floridade right now. I already know Everglades do pretty good, but I want to find something bigger that's a little easier to harvest and store away. And I think Floridade is going to be on the list. Uh, I've tried things like Heatmaster and Celebrity and I just they end up dying just like the rest. So uh, this will be an interesting year of testing. Uh, because the water's flowing, I think it'll stay a little cooler too in this system than in the Kratky systems over there. They've been doing okay, but we've had an unusual winter where uh, we've had more rain than normal. And that worries me a little bit too, that um, I'm having to stay on top of pruning. A lot of disease has been going around far more than normal for a winter uh, season here in Florida. But yeah, it's, it is what it is. Um, I do also have a pump down in there. I created, I took a five gallon bucket and basically made a uh, containment for it so that none of the plugs that go in and out are getting wet. They kind of go in there with a, a drip loop. So uh, water will never enter and cause a uh, surge or the fuse to go off or anything. And it's been working really well so far for that purpose. And so I have everything on a tap in there kind of going to and from and then I also have one of the uh, air pumps going into there to blow additional air to oxygenate the water. I just figure it never hurts. So on this side, I have the drain. I decided to put the um, reservoir over here because it'll just make the drain pipe execution easier on me. I did two one inch bulkhead fittings, which are really great, if, especially if you have a gasket material and this rubber cap served as that gasket material. So anti-leak very easy if you're having leaks if you build something like this you decide hey this is a cool idea i want to do it 
keep twisting it, twist it down and down, down until it's like so tight that you, know, you can't go any further and you should see the water leakage stop. Um, and then I just use hot glue to uh, glue all the fittings together and then um, down into a coupler and then one more piece of pipe down into the tote with a, a pool noodle wrapped around it to block light. And then I used a cloning collar on that one to block light. And um, yeah, no leaks. This one is doing very well. I would say it's even outperforming the uh, other one because there were some very minor leaks on the other one. So uh, everything on this one's been improved. I originally had designed this with a three quarter inch drain and it's a half inch going in and three quarters coming out and it was not able to keep up with it so even though it's a bigger hole the flow was just too great so you could get a weaker pump and you might be able to get away with it but um i just bumped it up to one inch and that solved all the problems so um yeah other than that um I've been harvesting these tomatoes as they've been ripening. They got diseased really bad, so I trimmed off the leaves and pretty much just waiting for them to ripen. I'm probably gonna pick these and transplant some new ones into these containers here soon. Um, this trellis idea I did was, you know, pretty decent, but um, did have a few flaws, so that'll be another perk of this new system I'm building. Once I remove these totes, I'll probably move these totes out of the way. <coughs> Excuse me, and then I will um, build the, the little hoop house or whatever you want to call it where these are. And um, yeah, they've got candy land here and yellow pear tomatoes that we've been picking off of, eating in salads. And yeah, everything is, is growing here to make a good salad except to uh, cucumbers, which I'm going to get on top of that here pretty soon. But um, yeah, otherwise. Uh, as far as an update goes, I plan on doing the electroculture again. Probably will be my next big project. I'm going to use this to do it. Uh, as you can see, I have these five-way um, side outlet tees in here. So I'm going to run poles up all of these because this is also going to be like a little greenhouse area with a shade cloth for the you know summer and uh, greenhouse for the winter. Um, so I'll be probably doing a coil. You know, like I did with the other one, I'll do a coil around there. And I'll have one of the inputs in here and one of the outputs in the ground. That way the electricity disperses in here and uh, the field will, uh, you know, break continuously in here. And then we will uh, see how it improves things. I'll be starting some new crops in here too once we harvest these cabbages, which I don't know. What do you think? It, it probably won't be too much longer, probably another month. Um, they'll be big, big enough to harvest, and then we'll have room for more stuff. But, um, yeah, I really appreciate uh, everybody who watches this. Um, and, uh, yeah, I uh, wish you guys a great growing season ahead. I know some of you are eager to warm up so you can start stuff again, uh, those who are north of here. And, uh, yeah, I guess uh, everybody take care for now, and uh, I will try to post an update sooner and later. All right, bye.